Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. And if no one has said thank you to you today, let me be the first to say thank you. Thank you for what you do. I know that as you go through this whole process, it's very burdensome, very time consuming. And I know that as you go through all this, that it's worth it, worth it to get on the other side. And I know you're doing it not just for your benefit, but for the benefit of your family, of your patients. I just want to say thanks. I know that it's a big deal. And what you're doing is going to benefit not just your life, but the lives of all the people that you'll interact with for years and years to come. It's something that I know to be true, having been practicing now for over a decade. It's something that is, I still get the biggest kick out of working with patients, helping them through difficult times. And I think you'd agree with me that we get to work with with such a wonderful population, uh, a time when when they're on the down and out. A PT can make make all the difference in the patient's day. I mean, let me tell you, from, from catastrophic injuries to more regularly scheduled interventions, like it's one of those things that, that you can really make a big difference today. And so thank you for what you do. I know that as you head out on clinical, that that's also quite burdensome. I remember very much being a student on my final clinicals and feeling like I was under the microscope all day. And chances are you're like that. Like, uh, let me just give you a little assurance that once you get through to the other side and you become a practicing PT, you know, signing your name DPT at the end, there's a difference in just the amount of energy you have. Uh, again, this is again speaking from my personal experience, but I just remember during those final clinicals, you feel like you're under the microscope. You're always always trying to be at the ready. You're always standing ready at the elbow of, of the attending physical therapist. And once you get on the other side, like you are the PT, you are now the, the resource for this patient. And there's just something that's more I don't know if I don't know if I want to say like calm and relaxed necessarily, but there's an ease that comes with that as you navigate things that not only are you very good at, but that you are that you know you can help people with. And that's something I think as PTs, that's a common experience we have. So thank you for what you do. Long way to say thank you. Thank you for what you do. And I hope you stick with it. It's I know that it's it's very, very burdensome as you head into test day, but it, it's absolutely worth it. All right, so today I've got a practice question. This is related to the integumentary interventions section on the exam. So on the test, you can expect to have a number of questions related to the integ system, so somewhere between eight and 11 questions. Uh, Certainly not a huge section, but it is one of the larger small sections, if that makes any sense. So integ goes through examination, differential diagnosis, and intervention. And so today I've got a practice question about it, and let's just go ahead and dive right into the question. After receiving transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation, the patient's adhesive electrodes from the modality are removed and the skin is inspected. Which of the following signs would be most indicative of an allergic reaction to the electrodes? So one, elevated tissue or elevated skin temperature, fever, malaise. Two, elevated white lesions with pointed projections. Three, redness or rash in the area where the electrodes have been applied. And four, ring-shaped pigmented patches with vesicles or scales with significant itchiness. So again, after the patient has received transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation, the patient's adhesive electrodes from the modality are removed and the skin is inspected. Which of the following signs would be most indicative of an allergic reaction to the electrodes? So we've got elevated skin temperature, fever, malaise, elevated white lesions with pointed projections, redness or rash in the area where the electrodes have been applied, and four ring-shaped pigmented patches with vesicles or scales with significant itchiness. All right, so the correct answer here is that option three, redness or rash in the area where the electrodes have been applied. This is indicative of contact dermatitis. A lot of times we refer to this as an allergic reaction to the adhesive or the material that was placed on the skin. Now, signs of contact dermatitis, there are a number of them, but typically these are allergic type reactions that you're considering. So we could have uh, erythema, edema of the skin that could really grow over the next one to two days, pruritus or extreme itchiness, as well as it could progress to vesiculation, oozing and scaling, meaning that it has damaged the skin quite significantly. Now, the key with contact dermatitis or allergic allergic reaction to a specific uh, something specific coming in contact with the skin is that typically it's a localized response. Now, obviously there would be some exceptional cases here, but a localized response, meaning that anywhere that, that, uh, that touched the offending item, 
is likely going to develop this dermatitis type reaction. And so this is this is like what you'd expect if you touch like stinging nettle or something, uh, something that's a, a skin irritant, you'd get that, that dermatitis or allergic type reaction. Now, I've had patients that have what we would consider extremely sensitive skin. Uh, I recall, recall one in particular that no matter what we placed on this patient's skin, uh, even the most sensitive or delicate electrode adhesive that we could find, it still caused a mild allergic reaction. And so we had to go a different route for our modalities just because simply the patient could not tolerate any type of, of adhesive or contact with the skin. So what should you do? In the case that you identify the patient has contact dermatitis, you should obviously remove the offending adhesive, almost always adhesive, but it could be contact with any type of chemical or material, but try to remove the offending material. And at that point, you're doing a symptom-based approach, meaning if it's quite severe, uh, you'll probably want to get medical intervention, some type of anti-inflammatory. If it's not very severe, a lot of times it's a watch and wait. So uh, as your professors would say, it doesn't just depend, it's a symptom-based approach. <laughs> So symptom-based approach. These other answer options, elevated skin temperature with fever and malaise, that would be indicative of some type of infectious process like a cellulitis or a skin infection. So the key there is not just the elevated skin temperature, but the fever or the general and the general feeling of, of, of non-well-being, of general malaise. Uh, elevated white lesions with pointed projections. These are what are commonly known as viral infections of the skin or commonly known as warts. They're viral infections of the skin. You get that white lesion with a pointed projection. Again, you'd not expect that right after treatment with an electrical modality. And finally, the last incorrect answer option are the ring-shaped pigmented patches with vesicles or scales. This is indicative of ringworm, also known as, uh, what is it, tinea corporis, that is extremely itchy often from contact with some infected surface. Um, but yeah, the, the key there is that ring-shaped fungal, fungal infection that often has vesicles. And again, you'd not expect that immediately following an elect electromodality intervention. Rather, the correct answer is redness or rash in the area where the electrodes have been applied. And so if it did occur, then you need to do some problem solving about how to use something with less adhesive, uh, perhaps the carbon impregnated silicone rubber Electrodes, those are the ones that are reusable. You just use a, a sponge that has been dipped in water. So you use essentially using water as your, as your coupling agent. But in any case, the uh, point is you have to find something that won't irritate the skin. All right, so there you go. Kind of a quick question talking about allergic reactions or contact dermatitis. Uh, be sure to check out all the other episodes we've got over here on the NPTE podcast. We're very closely, very, very almost to our 200th episode. So be sure to stay tuned for that. And if you haven't yet, it really just takes takes like one second. Uh, go ahead and leave us a five-star review. It really helps so much as we're trying to get the word out. Again, I've, I've said this before in other episodes, but it also helps other students to find this. Again, a totally free resource to come and participate with the podcast. Great free way to study, especially while you're on your clinical. It helps so, so, so much. So if you wouldn't mind, just take take one quick second, leave us a review. It just, like I said, it only takes a second and it makes such a big difference. So anyway, with that, we'll bring it to a conclusion here today. Thank you so much for what you, for what you do. I hope you'll check out ptfinalexam.com for all of our course offerings and to find all of our material. And in the meantime, stay safe out there. Have a fabulous day. Will Crane fist pumps all around. And I'll catch you all in the next episode. Thanks.